Hey, this is Laura McCarry at The Hidden Edge. And this is Nigel Davy at SME Needs. And this is one of our 10-minute business podcasts. Today, we're talking to Gavin Meikle of Interactive. It's, Gavin's a corporate trainer and author of The Presenter's Edge. And he's going to share some key tips on how to get great at interacting online. Gavin, hi. It's great that you can join us on our podcast. We've known each other for quite some time, initially through the general networking circuit, and then latterly through Toastmasters, the International Public Speaking Network. We've both had a significant role in the first online divisional speaking contest. That was quite recent, and it was a baptism of fire, wasn't it? It was. For our audience... Do tell us who you are, what you do for your clients, and what made you write the book? Yeah, well, Laura, I, I'm a Scot. Uh, I'm originally from Dundee in Scotland, but I now live in Portsmouth. Uh, and I've had a sort of interesting business career. I started off as a chemistry graduate uh, through a summer job, discor- discovered the corporate world of marketing, uh, and then from that moved into sales. And... Uh, It was during that phase of my life that I really became intensely curious about communication in all its forms. I think a lot of the the problems and and challenges in the business ultimately came down to communication, either lack of it or miscommunication or misunderstanding. And it became my passion uh, to understand that. Nowadays, I tend to help clients to do three things, really, to, to get clarity about who they're speaking to so that they can pitch their messages or their information at the right sort of level, get those messages clear and concise, and then look at the best ways to communicate that, whether it's in writing, whether it's face-to-face, whether it's uh, online. So that, that's, that's what I do. And, and I wrote the book, I think, because you know what it's like. You're trying to get, when you believe in something passionately, you want to reach as many people as possible. And obviously, through face-to-face, you can only reach so many people. And everybody told me, you know, you've got to write a book. Uh, and so I, I did. I, I've been uh, promoting it and flogging it to death ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Can I start off with asking a question about online meetings, Gary? One of the biggest problems actually is getting your voice heard. So when you're on, on Zoom, and obviously other brands are available, you can only hear one person at a time. And the talking over one another is a nightmare. So what do you recommend? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a common issue. And I think that the, the difference that makes the difference really is, is the way the meeting is set up in advance and the ground rules that are agreed, sometimes called netiquette. But really, they're just a set of ground rules that the participants agree to. And if the organiser of the meeting uh, either sends that out in advance via an email or takes a few minutes at the beginning of the meeting to set out some simple rules, such as keeping your microphone muted unless you're... Uh, being asked to speak, uh, having a way of indicating if you do we, we want to speak, whether it's by raising a hand physically on camera or whether it's by using one of the reactions uh, options in Zoom to indicate to the host that you've got something you want to say and then they can bring you in at the appropriate time. The, the second aspect I think about doing it is that when you do get a chance to speak is speaking in a way that is clear, concise, engaging and I think most of all relevant to the audience because if you go off on your pet subject that's completely irrelevant people will just switch off uh, no matter what the ground rules are so but when you when you get it clear when you're on point and it's relevant and they can see the relevant of that relevance of that then it works and and I think the other thing you need to do when you're delivering that message particularly on camera is to deliver it to those individuals down the camera lens rather than looking at the pictures of people on the screen. Because eye contact is really important for interpersonal communication and it's just as important online as it is face to face. Because if you're not making eye contact with your audience, then they're going to switch off, I think, unless your content is incredibly good. And also you lose the impacts. If you look right down the lens at somebody, particularly when you're making an important point, you really get a sense of connection. And it's a skill that isn't, doesn't come naturally, I think. We don't like to, 
to look at this lens of the camera. We'd rather look at the faces of the people. And so you have to imagine that there is somebody on the other side of the camera. Uh, one little trick that's quite useful is just to take a post-it note, draw an eye or something on it and pop it on top of your webcam so that it just reminds you to look at the camera to, and imagine your audience on the other side of it. Last podcast, Gavin, we touched on the future of online learning and leadership with our, our presenter there, Debbie Cohen. What changes do you envisage senior and middle managers will need to adopt to effectively lead online? Again, that, that's, that's a big question. So I'll, I'm going to try and focus in on just maybe one key idea that I think really applies to all types of leadership, whether you're in person or online. But I think it's particularly important online because the opportunities to do this particular behavior are, are harder to engineer. And what I'm talking about is being able to find time to catch your staff, members of your team, doing things right and shining a spotlight on that to encourage them to do that more often. When you're, you know, when you're, we're working from home and on our own, it's lonely and it can often be thankless because we don't get that, that almost accidental meetings with people at the coffee machine or somebody comes past our desk, overhears a conversation and says, oh, well done, that was, I, you know, you, I heard you doing, dealing with that customer really well. You're just sitting away in your bubble, your manager's in their bubble and they often don't get a chance to, to hear you and then they forget to tell you about it if they do. What, as a manager, you need to engineer time to do that. If I can give you an example, one of my clients described how he'd sat in on a, an online meeting between one of his sales representatives and a prospective client. He would noticed that this sales rep had done a, a really good job with the client. But rather than just kind of leaving the call, he, he kept the sales rep on the line for a few seconds after the meeting and just took time to point out exactly what that person had done that had impressed him. He talked about how she'd asked really good open questions and probed to find out what it was that the customer really needed, what their issues and concerns were. And then he went on to say how that she had used that knowledge to then tailor her pitch back to the client, focusing on the features and benefits of the product to specifically address those issues rather than a generic presentation. And the customer had, had agreed to buy as a result of that. Be able to shine a spotlight on somebody's good behavior, I think is one of the most fulfilling and rewarding things a manager can do, both for the member of staff they're giving feedback. But I think as a human being, it, you know, being able to catch somebody do something right and, and tell them why and the effect it had, I think makes us feel better too. Uh, and if you deliberately do that online, it can have a huge impact on the, the morale and productivity of the people you're working with. Gavin, unfortunately, with sort of the, the downturn in the economy and the expected recession, once um, I think people are sort of come back from furloughed, there's going to be many more people looking for work. Inevitably, leaders are going to want to adopt Zoom as, as part of the recruitment process. So what tips have you got for both sides of the virtual in interview table? The first thing that comes to mind is that that both sides need to remember that, that in an interview, uh, whether, it's, whether it's online or face-to-face, or, uh, -face, it, it's, it's kind of a matching process. The interviewer is, is assessing candidates to find the, the, the best person for the job, but the interviewee is also judging the employer and thinking, do I want to work for these people? Uh, and I think it's often the little, almost insignificant things like the clarity of your video picture or the quality of your audio coupled with the way that you engage with the other person through the, the camera lens that I spoke about earlier, that can have a, a significant impact on the, on the outcome of that interview. In terms of tips, I think the first thing is make sure that your camera lens is clean and sharp. I mean, I've been on lots of Zoom meetings where it looks like the person has uh, rubbed Vaseline on the lens or something for a nice soft focus effect. Most of the time, it's because they've just pressed it with their thumb at some point or other when adjusting it or something. And if you want to come across well, investing in, a, in a, uh, an HD uh, USB camera that you can plug in and just sit up on top of the screen can make a, a huge impact and improve your, your um, credibility and the way you come across. Again, a common thing is people will set up their laptop 
the camera is, is, you know, they're facing the laptop, there's a window behind them, and they just get silhouetted. They look, for all intents and purposes, like they're, they're, they're somebody that's on a witness protection program or something. And if you can't see somebody's face and you can't see their eyes and you can't read their face, it's much harder to, to judge them and say, are they telling the truth? Are they credible? Can I engage with them? Obviously, microphone quality as well, having an, ex an external microphone rather than lying on that, relying on that little pinhole microphone in your laptop. That can have a big effect. And finally, th there is a thing to do with this idea of virtual backgrounds. Now in Zoom, you can put up a, a view of the, the Hebrides or, or the planet Mars or this deck of the Starship Enterprise, whatever your fancy is. But one, I think you need to be careful what you choose with that and how does that relate to what you're trying to do with your job. Yes, it's a great way to perhaps cover up a, a messy room or a, or a small boardroom. But if it doesn't, if it if the technology doesn't work, then you end up with this very fuzzy thing. And whenever you move, you know, bits of you disappear, or your shirt changes colour, or your coffee mug, you know, becomes transparent in your hand. And to do to make it work properly, you either need a green screen, uh, which is not expensive. Then you know, the cost you can buy one for a, a few pounds off of Amazon or eBay or that sort of thing or you need a very high end PC that can do all the processing to tell which is background and which is foreground and, and create that so be, be if you are going to use visual aid uh, visual, virtual backgrounds rather make sure that they that, that they work test them out and get some feedback on it before you use it thank you so much for sharing these tips with us Gavin it would be great if our listeners can make contact with you, with you if needs be. How might they do that? Um, well, they're more than welcome to email me. It's my email address is gavin, G-A-V-I-N, at I-N-T-E-R hyphen A-C-T-I-V dot co dot U-K, uh, or via my website, www.inter hyphen A-C-T-I-V dot co dot U-K. Uh, I've got a blog on the website with lots of tips uh, and tricks about all things to do with presentation and communication. Or you can go on to uh, Amazon and search for The Presenter's Edge and you'll find it available in either Kindle or paperback form. So, um, so that's me, Nigel Davey from SME Needs. And me, Laura McCarry at The Hidden Edge. Please do make contact with any of us for sound business advice whenever you feel you need it. Ooh, and please don't forget to comment on or like, follow and share this podcast.